Mokalo Modric will or may regret or regret moving to Chelsea and snubbing Arsenal. Now, I have two people into this conversation. One is a player who once played for Chelsea and Arsenal. And he was a captain of Arsenal. That is William Gallas. Has gone ahead and really given his verdict on what he thinks Mukalu Modric is going to be like after snubbing Arsenal and signing for Chelsea. The other one is a former, former Modric coach who has really gone ahead to break silence on where Mukalu Modric would have gone ahead to play his game of football and really prosper to really hint or reach the levels that he has always dreamt of to be as a player who has always been tipped to win the Ballon d'Or at the football arena anyway or the football biggest event in france welcome to rokani media football it's really late and we're here to record this video and upload it before we go to bed you know how we do it this is rokan david now smash the like button comment and share if at all you're watching us for the very first time endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in on a day now there is nothing about the saga of mukalu modric that you don't know let me give you a little bit of a snippet. Arsenal were the one who scouted Mukalo Modric way back in the summer. After scouting Mukalo Modric way back in the summer, they went for him. They inquired about the player. They told him the player would go for 50 million euros. Arsenal said, all right, if it's 50 million euros, let's wait and see how this is going to go. But teams like Everton went in with 30 million pounds. With 30 million euros, it was rejected and uh, Southampton. Then later, Champions League starts. Shakhtar is playing the Champions League. Mukalu Modric scores four goals and three assists. Then his price hikes. The reasons gave the reasons given by the board directors or the board members of Shakhtar Donetsk of really calling for 100 million euros for Mukalu Modric was simple: that Modric is better than Anthony, and Anthony went for 100 million euros from Ajax to Manchester United. Modric is better than Jack Grealish, and Jack Grealish was bought 120 million euros or 100 million pounds from Aston Villa to from Aston Villa to Man City, and that was their base. They really laid on to call for 100 million euros. Aston were the first to make a first bid of the first bid was 40 million euros plus. 20 million euros it was turned down they made a second bid of 60 million euros plus 30 million euros it was really turned down they really went in for a bid that had close to 95 million euros in total and it was really turned down by a side called Shakhtar Donetsk Chelsea came in through hijacked the deal paid 100 million euros they agreed a deal of 100 million euros and they put on a lot of beneficiaries into the clauses that really Tempted or tempted the Shakhtar Donetsk boss to say, let the player go to Chelsea. Now, he comes in at Chelsea, gets a very, a very, a very good debut against Liverpool. That 25 minutes he played, he really looked right. When he was playing against Fulham, he really looked bad and he only played 45 minutes. And that has really tempted the following people to come out and really have something to say about this young lad that is really hugely, hugely talented as a player. Now, William Gallas, you know him very well. He first played for Chelsea and came in at Arsenal and captained Arsenal under the era of Arsene Wenger. Now, I believe he's not biased, maybe. Is he biased, you guys? Do you think William Gallas is biased? Is he leaning on a certain side? Which side of the fence is he on, guys? I want you to come in and tell me, the re and tell me your answer after I bring you what he has really gone ahead to say about... About... Mokalo Modric has said the way Arsenal play, Mokalo Modric would fit into the squad. And at the end of the season, he may regret he may regret it. What if Chelsea do not qualify for the Champions League? He was talking to the Getin Casino and obviously Metro Sport came in through and really quoted it. Now he's telling us that the way Arsenal play, Mokalo Modric would have been a perfect fit into that Arsenal style of play. Secondly, he hinted about if Chelsea don't qualify for the Champions League because, because chances are highly that they're not going to qualify. They're having 29 points, 29-30, and the person in the fourth place is having 40. There is a point gap of 10. There is Tottenham Hotspur. There is Manchester United having 43 points. So how far can Chelsea be consistent to see itself 
going to the Champions League. Do you know what that calls for? It calls for a team called Chelsea to be consistent, win like 10 games in a row because these other teams can really draw points and maybe hit like 60 points or 70. And to be on the safe side, Chelsea have to hit 70 points because if you hit 70 points, it will be hard for a team not to qualify for the Champions League because they've gone ahead to play 21 games and they're having 30 points. How many games left? 17. Out of the 17 games, they have 51 points to collect. Now, out of the 51 points, how many are they going to collect? Because if they are to hit 70 points, they need to collect to collect 49. Those are how many wins? 49 divided by 3, that is 1, 8. So they need to make close to 19 wins. No, they need to make like 15. They need to make like 16 wins out of 17. Oh, very hard calculation for Chelsea. Can Chelsea win all those games to hit 70 points? Because when you look at Manchester United, they are left with 27 points to hit 70. Newcastle are left with 30 points. Those are 10 games, winning 10 games out of the 17 they are left with. So who of the two is really having an easier catch? I think it's it's Manchester United and Newcastle and Tottenham Hotspur. So it will be hard for them to qualify for the Champions League, according to me, and they might find themselves out of this equation. Now, William Gallas told us that Arsenal may be champions in the end. At the end of the season, maybe he will regret it. It could have been an opportunity for him to play well and in the Champions League next season. That's what he said. So the point of regretting is based so much on what Arsenal is going to achieve this season that Mukalu Modric would have been part of this. He would have been part of the wins that Arsenal are really getting. Premier League trophy. Do you know what it means coming in a team and you win a trophy immediately? A Premier League trophy that the team had taken close to 20 years without winning. Those are two decades. Because by the time the Premier League ends, Arsenal would have taken two decades without winning a Premier League. If Mokalo Modric was at Arsenal, I think would have been a perfect fit in that team and would have been really performing very, very well for the club of Arsenal. That's what he's talking about. Then, Champions League next season is something else that he hinted about that Mokalo Modric might miss out on when he is at Chelsea because Chelsea looks like they are not really doing anything towards the Champions League and the best they can do to play the Champions League is for them to win it and be defending champions because there is no tournament that a defending champion, especially the Premier, the, the, the Premier, the Champions League, that a defending champion isn't allowed to qualify or to, to take part, even if he doesn't meet the qualifications. For the World Cup, it's possible. For the Euros, it's possible because you have to play qualifiers. If I told you fail to qualify, you won't come in through. But for the Champions League, because it's played annually, if you fail to qualify and win it, then they call upon you. They call upon you to take part into it. Now, Galas again said, Modric may end up being disappointed, but the decision was not entirely his. While Shakhtar chief executive Serge Plakin explaining that Arsenal's offer did not make as much sense as Chelsea's, which is why it was not accepted. That's what Galas really concluded with, that the player is going to get disappointed with his decision because... Arsenal is really going to win. And when you see Arsenal getting back to the winning ways, when you see Arsenal getting back to the winning ways and Manchester United coming, you know that the era is back. That era of United and Arsenal dominating the league is back. I believe it's going to be very hard for Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool, Tottenham Hotspur, Newcastle to compete with these teams because they are the most supported teams in the Premier League. Sorry, in the entire world. They have a huge fan base, and the moment they start winning again, they are going to attract good and good players. Secondly, they're having good managers who are really having a very huge financial support. I know Chelsea are really having rich, rich owners, good manager, but I believe he needs to go through a process. Ten Hag has really coped up early enough. Do you know why? He really has the experience that Graham Potter doesn't have. 
Mikel Arteta has been with this team for three years to reach where it is. Now, if it's going to take Chelsea three years or three seasons to reach where Arsenal is, Arsenal would have gone ahead to win like one or two Premier League trophies, maybe even a Champions League and very many others, and Chelsea would be down, meaning that Modric will be there regretting for three years for having not joined Arsenal. That's it. And I believe them paying a visit at the Emirates, they are going to face it hard when they are playing Arsenal. Modric is going to be part, is going to be there. Arsenal fans are going to be booing him. You get as they sing songs that really go up to his head. If at all he cannot handle that, insu those insults coming in from the fans of Arsenal, then he might find himself even not playing the game of football very well. So, I believe these people really have a point in what they are saying about Mokalo Modric getting disappointed because Arsenal was really a team where everything was ready made for him to go on and redo the needy fall. And Chelsea, him going to Chelsea, he was plateauing himself. He was plateauing himself, but Arsenal had laid a table all there waiting for Modric to come there and thrive. Now, Galas concluded by telling Arsenal that, however, Arsenal will have to move on and now they will have the chance to bring in new players so they can play with the players they want. So, he's calling for Arsenal to go ahead and really move on and forget all about Mokalo Modric and get in other players. And I think they have Trossard um, and very many others they're really looking at next summer to go on and really bring them in as far as they are really called for. So that is Galas for you. Do you think he's really biased? All the points he's really delivering are really good and really on point. Now, after Mkalu, after after William Galas, there is a former manager of Mokalo Modric he has something to say about Mokalo's deal, Modric's deal to, to Chelsea. He said, Modric would have been a better suit to Arsenal. And he said, the former coach of new, the, the former coach of new Chelsea winger Mokalo Modric says the Ukrainian winger would have been better suited to Arsenal than all after his January transfer window switch to London and he joined Chelsea. Now, this coach knows Modric very well. And he is predicting that he would have gone ahead to have the best of performances at Arsenal than at Chelsea. Though it was not his decision, but he would have gone ahead to experience the best. Maybe one day, one time, Modric will cross from Chelsea to Arsenal, but I doubt because he signed a deal of close to seven years. Unless otherwise he flops and then Arsenal goes in for him, like they've gone in for Jorginho. Jorginho was not a flop, but the fact was they, had, they were bringing in... Enzo Fernandez, a player who was going to take over that position that he was playing at Chelsea. And to show to it that he was the replacement of Jorginho, he was even given the short number of Jorginho at Chelsea. So your thoughts on Mokalo Modric and him regretting not joining Arsenal are welcome in the comment section below. And let's get into this last story. This guy was one of those that really even put out a video and shared stories and posts from people each and every time he was linked to Arsenal. He's on an EFS Besuma. Tottenham Hotspur bought him at £25 million. That was an absolute silly because he was left with one on his contract and Brighton never wanted to risk to lose him out on a free. It looks like it was not the signing of Antonio Conte. That's why he's not using him a lot in his midfield. But if his Besuma is better than Hojbag, is better than Bentaku in that midfield. According to the eye test he gave us, or he passed when he was at Brighton, I think was even better than Kesido. His numbers and stats were better than those of Kesido that's really putting up. But going to Spurs, he has really seen himself not getting enough playing time and obviously has really fallen off. And today, we are having some bad news coming in from Spurs on Yefis Besuma that this is a post or a tweet coming in from the Spurs Twitter account that we can confirm that Yefis Besuma is to undergo surgery on Friday to repair a stress fracture to his left ankle. The time frame for his return will be determined after surgery. He will be he will begin rehabilitation with our medical staff as soon as possible. So for Yefis Besuma, it's really bad news. This injury blow to him because you never know 
they've been playing one game per week and with the Champions League coming in through maybe the manager would have really gotten him enough time as the Champions League is resuming next week but as the Champions League approached then he got an injury very bad I saw him coming through in the game of Man City I think he played like 10-15 minutes in that game but uh he has really lost his grip he's no longer the FSB Suma that we used to know you know that very well and uh, I sometimes ask myself what really befalls these players because even when they bring him on it looks like he's not enjoying his stay at uh he's not enjoying his stay at Tottenham Hotspur you get but uh, I believe it might act as a spark for him to live in the summer if Antonio Conte stays because I don't believe his agent is happy with how Antonio Conte is treating him that's it the player is not happy his body language orchestrates everything that is running in his mind the player is not happy and looks like he needs to be redeemed and rejuvenated and saved from what is happening at Tottenham Hotspur but I think the only hope is really having is uh, Conte leaving at the end of the summer sorry at the, at the end of the season and I believe if Spurs don't qualify for the Champions League Conte is going to part ways with Tottenham Hotspur because there will be nothing he'll be really offering to the board of Tottenham Hotspur but for Yefis Besuma he's really going through a hard time and these are decisions that players make and agents that cost them I believe they sold him a lie the board of Spurs that Conte wants you because when you look at how Yefis Besuma was playing at Brighton if at all he was a Conte signing there is no way he couldn't get into that team <laughs> but obviously there is no way he's getting into that team and it's really worrying that a talented player like Yefis Besuma can't fit into that team so that's it for Yefis Besuma let's keep our hands crossed for him such that he returns early enough but them not knowing the time frame for his return is really worrying a lot and a lot so guys your thoughts on Yefis Besuma injury huge injury blow are welcome in the comment section below then modric will he regret moving to chelsea and snubbing arsenal yes or no i really want to see your reactions into the comment section below rokan david is my name rokan media football is the youtube channel thank you for watching in and i'm signing out guys unless otherwise there is something else you want to tell me but i'm signing out see you in the morning and let's talk to you later but don't forget to say a prayer before you go to bed and may the Almighty Lord bless you abundantly. That is what we had for you. Four stories for today. I think you've enjoyed them, but I promise you we are not going to come late. We're not going to start late. We are starting early, 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 early in the morning because there is a press conference of the Chelsea manager, Graham Porter, as they are preparing for West Ham. There is that of Eric Ten Hag. That happens on the United Matters channel. That's where you get to catch me. There is that of Mikel Ateta as he tells us what's up with Arsenal after their second loss of the season and they are playing Brentford at the Emirates. That is tomorrow on Saturday. So, lots of things to dive in tomorrow. And I hope you guys don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell after subscribing because we are going to be offering in lots and lots of things that you guys need to know about the Premier League. I sign up for now, guys, for the last time. Ciao, ciao, and bye-bye.